Hey, it's Matt with Reblet. And this video is the first step to building your own website, taking that idea that's always been in your head, but you didn't quite know how to build and making it live, or even building your own business on Replit. And today I'm going to discuss what Replit is. I'm going to discuss what a Repl is. And then I'll talk a bit about how Replit can help you actualize those ideas. We'll talk about the different types of applications you can build on Replit from your own website to a full stack application to really anything you can think of. And we'll also discuss, you know, how to run an application and configure your environment to get something working. Now, it's important to discuss what a REPL actually is and how REPLit works. You know, what is REPLit? REPLit lets you focus on building. We take care of configuring languages, installing packages, all of the manual configuration you might have to do otherwise. We add in some really cool AI features that help you accelerate that process. And then we add a really simple way to take what you just built and deploy it. And that's because if your app runs on Replit, it's already running in the cloud. So it's really simple and really straightforward to deploy on Replit. So let's jump in. If you create a Replit account and log into Replit, this page will be the first thing that you see. Um, and you'll notice a few things. First, you can create a Repl on the left or you can import one from GitHub. So if you've worked with projects in the past, if you already have a GitHub repository you'd like to start from, or maybe you want to try out somebody else's code, you can click this button and you can literally drop in a GitHub URL as long as that repository is public and it's going to create a new REPL for you. Many of the same things about configuring a REPL we're going to discuss in this video. So if you watch this video, you'll probably know the basics of importing something from GitHub and getting it running. Once you create REPLs, they'll be available in this REPL pane here. Um, we also have a deployments pane. Once you get everything set up and start deploying, um, we're going to have a separate video on how to deploy REPLs uh, and then a usage pane to monitor your usage. Now, as I mentioned, we have the REPLit agent, which can help actually do many of the steps we're going to discuss in this tutorial for you. But today we're going to get started with a blank REPL. And the reason I'm choosing a blank REPL is that everything sort of follows from the basics here. So once I create this blank REPL, you'll know what to do with a Python REPL, et cetera. But the very fundamentals of creating a REPL and getting started, uh, you can learn by just creating a blank REPL. So when I click Create REPL, what's happening? Well, REPL's creating an entire environment, an entire environment that lives in the cloud and is independent from my machine. So if I go to the workspace and I type in like LS or LS LA, I get a list of all the files here. And you might notice, right, the files reflect what we have in this side pane over here, and they're independent from anything that runs on my machine. Now, it might feel really fast. It might feel like this isn't going through the cloud, but that's sort of the magic of the product and what we've spent all this time building. Now, the, the power in this is that if you've ever tried to configure something on your local machine, right, if you had to install Python um, and then you put maybe a project in its own directory, but then maybe you have conflicting packages that, you know, you're trying to install. They conflict with each other. You need to figure out what a virtual environment is and go through all that setup. You don't have to worry about that with Replit because this is isolated. It's separate from any other REPL that you create. Now, you can connect things. That's more of an advanced topic, and I have some videos on that as well. But for the most part, this isolated environment is really powerful because it means you don't have to worry about that configuration. But because this is a brand new machine and we didn't start from a Python REPL or a Node REPL, say I want to create a Python project, I have to configure that. Now, there are a couple different ways you can do that. I think my favorite one um, is just typing in Python. And we have some really smart command line tools. So if you just type in Python in the shell and hit Y, Replit installs Python. You can see that by going to this dot Replit file. These files might be hidden to start, but if you just click the three dots and click show hidden files, you'll be able to go to this dot Replit file. And you can see there that m the modules argument now contains Python 3.11. And so if I go over here and type Python, now my REPL recognizes that Python's installed. But maybe you're saying, hey, you know, like I need Python 3.12 for my project. All you have to do is change that to 3.12. And whoops, it takes, uh, you actually have to run a command to reload that environment. Um, now I have Python 3.12. So just like that, you can update your version of Python. So that's kind of a quick hack, right? Or a quick shortcut, maybe. You can do actually the same thing with NPM. So if I type in NPM, Replit's going to recognize it wants Node installed, and boom, now I have Node.js installed in this REPL. But there's a simpler way to do this, and that would be going to the Packages or Dependencies tool. And so the Dependencies tool is a faster, more simple, straightforward way to configure these modules, right? So if I, uh, right, you can see we already have Python uh, configured and you can add packages there. But if I want to remove these, um, 
I could literally uh, type the hit the trash can icon and it's going to remove those modules from the dot replit file. Now, at the same time, I can add new modules and then search for them here. So say Python uh, 3.12. We can look at the, the module, see what's going on, see it includes the packager and um, what we want there, and then install it again in the modules file. And note that it says base now. I wouldn't worry too much about that. I think we're still good. So that's the fundamentals of installing uh, languages in a REPL. Um, so if I type Python now, we have Python installed. And when you fork a Python REPL, you're just copying a pre-configured environment into your REPL instance that contains some of those uh, you know, languages, packages. We also include a PyProject file, which makes it easier to manage packages. So let's actually go back to the home page. Uh, well, I'm going to delete this so that uh, I don't start creating a bunch of crazy stuff. And now we'll click Create Python REPL. Um, so we just created a blank REPL and we configured Python, we made it work. What's the difference in creating this uh, you know, Python REPL? Well, you can see we have a poetry file configured. We have a Pi project file configured. And what are these things? Well, they're just really easy ways of managing Python files. So if you look up poetry, if you look up Pi project, they're just a declarative way of saying, hey, these are the packages I want installed instead of maybe using something like requirements.txt. And accordingly, if you want to add packages in a poetry uh, environment, you do poetry add. So I'm gonna add install flask. So I had to type poetry add flask, poetry sees that, and then it adds flask to my poetry file. You can see now in, under my dependencies, I have Flask as a dependency. So we know Poetry has configured this environment. So now I have Flask installed, right? And the next thing I would wanna do is probably type some code in this main file and run it. But first we're gonna talk about how to configure the run button because a lot of people find that confusing. Uh, the run button is also configured in this dot replit file that we talked about in the last REPL. And so you can see we have an entry point main.py. We have modules, Python 3.11 in this REPL. Uh, and if I click run, it's we first run through some like poetry stuff um, and nothing happens, but it's executing main.py. So if I typed print, you know, like hello in main.py, save that and then click run. Okay, we get a hello. So the REPLit file is running uh, main.py. And the reason is that entry point, which is technically the file that you land in when you first open a REPL, also runs the REPL by default. Now, if we wanted to have a separate run command, we just type in run python main.py. And this is actually the preferred uh, preferred way of defining things. So usually when you configure a REPL for the first time, you wanna configure the run command. We're gonna go uh, run and then define the command. So now we can be sure that main.py is being run. And I have a boilerplate Flask app. So we're building our first app now, right? We have the REPL configured. We know that when we click run, it's gonna run the app. Um, and now I'm dropping in a really basic, uh, really basic Flask app. And we're gonna define a simple route that when we navigate it to it, it's gonna print, hey there. And so if I click run, because it's executing main.py, we see the web view pane pop up and it says, hey there. Now there's an important call out here. If you click run and the web view pane doesn't show up, you might need to go to the networking tab. And in the networking tab, it'll display the open ports. So in Flask, we're opening this port on 8,000 and mapping it to an external port. The default external port is always 80. Now, if this didn't exist, the web view is not gonna show anything. That's important to note. By default, we expose that port for you, but it might be necessary to set that external port to 80 and then refresh the web view tab. And that's how we're gonna get this hey there statement to actually show up. Now, what's going on, right? Because when you run stuff on your laptop, it might go to localhost 3000. That's kind of a meme at this point, but there is no localhost 3000 here. So where is this one running? Well, it's actually running on this development URL. So if I go to this URL in my browser, I'm gonna make this a lot bigger. <laughs> you can see that it's actually, it's a website effectively. And that's, that's pretty cool. And that's pretty cool because it means that when you're running this development environment, there's actually a live development URL you can visit at any time. So say I wanted to test this website out on my phone. If I copied this link and opened it on my phone, I would see exactly the same thing. And uh, that's pretty useful if you're developing across platforms, or you wanna see how things look on your phone, or you just wanna test things out. So it speeds up the development process, 
But it's important to note that these are temporary URLs. And as soon as you leave this page, that URL won't exist anymore. But this is the real power of Replit because it's not running on localhost. It's not running on your machine. You've effectively done everything that you need to do to deploy this application. And in a next video, we're going to talk about an introduction to this workspace, like how to configure some of these advanced tools that live in the workspace. But we're also going to talk about an intro to deployment. And I'm going to share with you the different types of deployments that exist on Replit and how you can just take this page and put it on its own website for anyone to see, anyone to access. You can use it as an API or schedule it as a cron job. You can do pretty much all of it on Replit. So I'm Matt. This has been an intro to Replit, an intro to the workspace. Hopefully you understand the fundamentals of configuring a REPL. We configured a Python REPL here, but the same holds for configuring a Node REPL. You just install Node and configure the Run button or any other language you could really imagine. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. I have many more on the way. Until next time, peace.